Hello and welcome to Tools in the Shed, a podcast powered by Cars Guide, ready to rip into car stuff that has caught our eye this week. I'm James, and with me is Matt, G'day. who's been mucking about in the bush, uh-huh. and Tom, Yo. who's been warming up for next year's Tokyo Olympics. And we'll update you on the man who fears we're close to the end time in this week's Musk Watch. Oh. Mm. So stay with us. But first, feedback, and quite a lot of it. So Good. let's let's rattle through this. It's great, as always, to receive it. Thank you. So on Facebook, uh, Jason, and for anyone watching or listening, you can uh, catch the podcast on Facebook, on the Cars Guide uh, page. So he says, all experts now, are we? Bet these guys wouldn't have even owned a full-size pickup, right? <laughs> and then a day later, Shane Whitley says, yeah. <laughs> on you, Shane. Yeah. So, okay, fair enough. Good comment, Jason. Thank you very much. No, I haven't owned I a full-size have, pickup. I've, I haven't owned a full-size pickup. I've owned a Ute, yeah, an HG too. Belmont, which yeah. was my first ever car, and it was Brilliant. I owned a KB Rodeo. Yeah, it was the super, super long tray, this yeah. two-wheel drive, and it was amazing. It looked mad because it was low. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the Belmont, honestly, the only thing I ever had to do is put oil, water, petrol in it, yeah. service it occasionally, use it, plug. it was brilliant. Yeah. Such a good car. Great name too. Belmont. 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 Okay, so Matt Murdoch. Uh, says, still to be convinced, electric cars are the way to go. Mm. So he raises the point that is often raised, shifting pollution from the tailpipe to the power station, yep. um, You know, extra pollution in manufacturing an electric car, digging the materials out of the ground, disposing of batteries, etc. cetera. Um, you can argue charging from solar or wind cuts pollution, but how many people leave their car charging at work um, in the daylight? So I don't quite understand that uh, mm. last comment, but um, Matt, yeah, it's... That ground has been well trodden in terms of how the power is produced. Yep. Um, green power obviously makes that equation an entirely different one. There's actually a really interesting counter argument to that with the advent of electric cars because it's not all just charging them and then using them. It's charging them and then being able to use them as sort of a mobile power source yeah. and then mm. giving back to your home. Mm. Uh, the argument there is, oh, okay, you know, sure, you're moving all this power you know, power around and it, it still has to be generated. But the thing with power generation in a grid is something to the effect of 70% of all power generated is wasted. Mm. So right. even when it's at the lowest, lowest time of the day, whatever it is, midnight or middle of the day, when... We're bleeding off a lot of energy. Yeah, the reactors, wow. the, all those power generation reactors still have to run to, mm. to stay going. Mm. Um, and so all that power just gets wasted. So the idea is if you're using, if everyone's car is a mobile battery and they're charging themselves at work, they can then just go home when it would normally be peak time yep. and then run their house yeah, off cool. of their and car. I, I th- yeah, it feels like that is certainly the way things are headed. Yeah. But it's a good point about you're still digging stuff up out of the ground yeah. to make things. We've said before that lithium's a pretty delicate substance yeah. and it's invariably mined from you know yeah. pretty tricky environmental areas. So yeah. um, there's that. Yeah. There, there is well. there is definitely something in that argument. Yeah, yeah. humans are just cancer in the universe. And we just wreck <laughs> everything much. that we go to. That's what it means. Can't By world. Go, to, go to Mars and ruin that <laughs> as yeah, well. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So we are uh, the first... We're a virus, and this is the first cell <laughs> yeah, that we've attacked, right, and yeah. then we just hop to the next one, right? So it's the very beginning. <laughs> Greg Wallace, where can I buy a cap? Oh. Ah, now, you may have noticed. Now, Greg made that comment um, underneath our YouTube version of the podcast. You may notice, Greg, that there is a merch shop um, running on our page. You can buy caps and all kinds of things. So you can buy tights now. Yeah. Tights. Cars yes, guide tights. tights. Yeah, I'm yet to pick my pair up, but uh, they are available as <laughs> they're not, well. They're not quite the same as the jeggings I've got at home, oh, but uh, ooh, yeah, you've gone they're to pretty the top com- shelf. Yeah, look. Uh, Craig Hill says, when motoring journalists own electric vehicles, let me know. And that's a pretty fair comment <laughs> yeah, at yeah. this point, I've got to say. I would love to own an i3, but that love has not actually um, transferred into... Mm moving funds from bank account into a dealer's bank account. So, yeah. uh, you know, I've, fair call. I've got to say, if, if the Kona Electric was cheaper, I could see myself owning it. Yeah, really? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fact is, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 60 grand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, <laughs> Philip Chadwick says, brilliant show, guys, dash the best. Oh, Oh. It is by far the most entertaining car chat out there. So, Philip, thank you. Uh, you received the check, obviously. David Burt <laughs> uh, says, when does Raptor get the Rangers available safety tech pack? And, Matt, we were chatting about this yesterday. Yeah, so it was part of the 2020 update for the Ranger lineup. The Raptor now has AEB and adaptive cruise control uh, available 
to order now. Now. So. Okay, so the answer is right now. Yeah. Uh, David Anderson says, Musk, love him or hate him, certainly put electric vehicles on my radar. Okay. Everything before Tesla might as well have been a toaster with a slick paint job on wheels for all I care. But now I think the future of driving is almost certainly going to be plug-in. Uh, now, if we could just get him to put the spliff down and develop a proper off-road 4x4, happy days. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's that's I, pretty jacked. I really I don't get this thing with electric off-roading because yeah. you go off-road, what happens when you run out? Yeah. You know? Mm. In a, There's in a no jerry like, can. In a place like Australia, it's going to be a difficult proposition where in America, you know, you could go to a mountain range and you're, you know, five yep. minutes from yep. a major city. But here, you might have to drive four hours before you get to where mm. you want to go. I suppose it also depends on how you define off-roading. Yeah. Yeah? Now, so for some people, off-roading is a dirt trail. Yeah. And you're not too far away from civilization. For others, it's more hardcore, yeah. right out there, and you are a long way. Yeah. So it depends on how you define that. And I suppose, like, you know, if you're doing sand driving, that's going to drain that battery right, quick. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Big yeah, time. It would. Yeah, it would. People might not expect it. They'll get, they'll get stranded. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they get stranded now. They get stranded now. That's yeah. true. Um, so Adam Adam Hanrahan says the Model X towing is terrible because of the range. The efficiency is horrendous. I can't believe you guys said that it's great for towing. To which David Burt says Adam Hanrahan. However, so is the efficiency of a two hundred series Land Cruiser. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's an interesting counterpoint. I thought. But uh, anyway, we found that towing with the Model X, it had a lot of torque, yeah. which in an operational sense made it a really good vehicle. And also a car-like experience right. from the driver's mm-hmm. seat rather than driving yep. a big ladder frame truck, essentially, yep. Yep. Um, to tow something boxy behind it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just, a, just a more car-like mm-hmm. towing experience. Yeah. Now, and credit where credit's due. Like, it, it made it where we pitched it, it to go. Yeah. So. True. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Now, good old Prince Dog Official has said that uh, they found the discussion about the big American utes interesting. Uh, wondering about Ram 1500 versus 2500 and Chevy Silverado 2500 in a sales sense. Now, I contacted uh, HSV about Silverado. They no longer report to the Federal Automotive Chamber with their registration numbers. Haven't had any response from them, but if and when we do, I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, now, thinks Ram 1500 success in Australia is down to competitive pricing. So you're starting at 80k for your mm. entry point into RAM um, and some others, and particularly if you've gone to a, a small volume converter who's yeah. taken a car and swapped the wheel to the other side, you're talking enormous dollars. Yeah. Thinks larger utes are overpriced at close to 150 grand. If Nissan brings the Titan to Oz and tries to sell it for much more than the RAM 1500, it's a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Um, as a Hilux owner, I'd love to upgrade to a Tundra, but at three times the price, you'd have to be silly or super rich to do so. Mm. Okay? Yeah, they're all fair points. And I mean, David yeah. Burt said, many of us will keep our cash until there's a range of factory right-hand drive models available, not paying for a car to be pulled apart and put back together again, to which Prince Dog went back and said, unfortunately, we'll continue to miss out on many great vehicles because they won't shut down their assembly lines to build right-hand drive vehicles because the demand for left-hand drive Mm -hmm. means they can't produce cars quick enough. And that's Mm. true. You think about Ford with the F-150. I watched a great doco um, on the TV not long ago, Netflix, I think, about the Rouge plant, uh, Ford's Rouge plant, where F-150 is produced. It's timed down to the nanosecond. And that sausage machine is pumping out F-150s so regularly for someone to say, oh, by the way, we need about 50 right-hand drives. Yeah, Ooh, that yeah. would throw it out for go, years. Go away, yeah. please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's tricky. So, look, thank you for all of that feedback. It was terrific and much appreciated. And we, we had comments from, you know, YouTube and from Facebook. So, anyway, that's Keep great. Keep it coming. And, and on Instagram, actually. Uh, oh, yeah. When we were out on the Ute comparison, uh, we put together a little story about what we were doing out there. Yep. We just done one this week. It, it was the biggest one ever I think we've yep. ever done. Yep. Um, yep. Six, six Utes out there. And uh, we actually got some podcast listeners leaving us some feedback on great. the story. So, you know, they're keen to see that. Some, something about Crafty. Yeah, something about Crafty. Someone had to go yeah, at Crafty. Look, he he <laughs> generates a lot of feedback. <laughs> um, he's a discussion now, point. He's yeah. a discussion point on legs. <laughs> now, Matt. Yeah. You, speaking of the Ute Comparer, that's a yes, perfect segue. It was. So without um, spoiling the result, tell yep. us what you've been up to, who, what, when, where, why. Uh, okay, so we had our biggest comparison yet, which was six dual cab four-wheel drive Utes, all diesel, all automatic, all between fifty-two and $61,000. Yep. So a mix of different variants represented, uh, not necessarily all high specs, but almost all high specs. But they're all in that 10K 
uh, yeah. band. Yeah. yeah. So basically, we had the uh, Mitsubishi Triton, which was the most affordable. Um, it's the most expensive Triton you can get is fifty two grand. And mm. it's the newest. It's the newest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, uh, kind of. Okay. Um, most. Yeah, <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> okay, kind of. Um, so, and then there's uh, the Isuzu D Max LST that we had, about fifty five grand, and then you're stepping up to the likes of the Holden Colorado uh, Z seventy one we had, which is about fifty eight. Yeah, um, wow, yeah. And then there's the Nissan Navara Entrek, which is actually the newest variant I available see, in I this see. mix. Hence the confusion on what's yeah. newest. Yeah. Um, and it's about fifty eight ish as well. Um, and the Entrek uh, really, I won't go too far into it, but a bit of a surprise package mm. on the test um, and then we also had uh, what else did we have the Ford Ranger uh, XLT, XLT yep. so XLT isn't it's about well there's above it there's Wild Track there's going to be a Wild Track X and then there's a Raptor and yeah. so there's a bunch of models above XLT but it's about where the majority of buyers are at, are at. Yes. Um, yeah. and we've heard that um, from Ford from dealers that you know, XLT is where uh, people are shopping yep. um, and it's about it was the most expensive on the test, sixty thousand ish mm. dollar dues, yeah, which yeah. is but people yeah. are buying them. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I can't actually remember the sixth Ute. Does that does it? Is that a bad thing? Okay, through the magic of electronics and post production, <laughs> we'll have that up behind us. So continue <laughs> we, on, Matt. For those what, watching on, did YouTube, you say Isuzu? Yes. Yeah. So Come on, go. let's go through it. All right, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi, God. Isuzu, Isuzu. <laughs> Nissan. Yeah. Mitsubishi. Wait, we already oh, said Mitsubishi. God. Oh, we're not doing well. well yeah. <laughs> Stop that. Yeah. Continue okay. on. Um, anyway, it was an extensive test, obviously uh, exhaustive, and uh, we all forgot what happened during the test. Was it um, at Crafty's Close Optional Facility? No, no, no. We we went elsewhere this time around. Uh, <laughs> right. We were in the Southern Highlands in of New, New South, South Wales. Wales. Yep. Um, so not far from the Clothing Optional Retreat, yep. Yep. Uh, but this place uh, is more um, what you might expect to find if you're the sort of recreational four-wheel driver. And that was the point of this test. You know, these six utes um, to uh, put them through their paces and see how they go in two distinct settings. So Righto. firstly, on-road. Yes. And secondly, off-road. Okay. The point wasn't to do a load test, wasn't to do towing. Uh, it was to just see what they're like for the average buyer who's going to use them on-road and off-road. Yep. And so we went on an on-road loop. Was, there was four of us in the car at the time. Um, so there was me, Crafty, and Lily, who's one of our publishers, and Steve Otley, who's one of our contributors. Yep. And we spent uh, about half an hour or 45 minutes in each car going over the same roads in, yes. in the Southern Highlands. And then we do extra bits on the side as well. We ended up doing quite a few kilometers over right. a couple of well, days. Six vehicles. Yeah. yeah. So then we went out and did the off-road test on day two. So apropos of our conversation just a little while, just a few minutes ago, what does off-road mean in this context? So in this context, there was uh, gravel tracks. Yep. Uh, there was a steep, rocky, rutted hill climb. Righto. Some mud dips. Oh, um, right. That sort yep. of stuff. So yep. um, we didn't go on sand this time around. There yep. was no sand where we were. Um, obviously, that is an important part for a lot of people's off-road considerations. But we've done reviews of pretty much all of these utes. Yes. Uh, and you can be able to read everything you need to know about so those So if utes. the Moab Canyons is 10, you know, and a freeway is 1, where was our off-road on that scale of 1? Probably uh, between 6 and 8. Six, I would say. six to eight. So it wasn't like we weren't putting the cars at risk because yeah. we wanted to do the sort of off roading that you do if you're spending fifty mm. or sixty thousand dollars of your own money. Yeah, sure. You don't want to be ripping off uh, bumpers, bumpers no, and no, no, underbody no. protection. Hey, I just remembered the sixth car, <laughs> Hilux. How could oh, I yeah. forget? Because of the bumper. Yeah. No, right. no, because oh. of the side steps. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, it was the Hilux SR5. Oh, of course. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which has just been updated, obviously, with uh, the safety pack across the entire Hilux range. So yeah. there's a, there were a few reasons for us to do this test, obviously, a few uh, talking points to go into it. Um, and, you know, it's... I mean, we've we've said it before, but there's there's always a surprise in one of these Great. comparison tests, Great. and uh, there were actually a couple of surprises yeah. uh, this time around. Perfect. So it's the meatiest part of one of the most competitive and hottest market segments yep. that we've got. I can't believe I forgot the SR5 yeah. highlights. Oh, oh, there, there were so many little things in the test where you'd never pick them up unless you... So many little things like a Toyota Hilux. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. A, like a Hilux, you know, <laughs> totally missed that. Yeah. Um, it's just a detail. But, but there are so many little things that you pick up, you drive them and you sort of, you get in another one and you, and you go, oh, 
that's how the steering should feel. Yeah, yeah that's you know? right. Yeah. This is Australia's best-selling car. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a Hilux. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and those those little elements, like even even the usability of media screens, yeah. or you know the controls in the car, God, or put dials in, um, man. Back back seat comfort, you right. know, like some things that you might not consider yeah. if. And they might not be important to until you. Until the kids start complaining. Yeah, until they go, oh, my back late. hurts. I've been yeah, in the yeah. car for an hour and your back hurts. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. you feel sick or whatever it may be. Good. So. so that sounds like it will be super useful because it's, you know, a top selling um, segment. Yes. And we've got six of the, the best oh, um, it's, in there. It's uh, it's going to be a hoot of a video to watch coming soon, probably by the end of, oh, by the next podcast. Next pot- podcast will be around. So video, Hopefully. full written review. All that stuff. Yep. Heaps to get through. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you, Matt. That's superb. Now, Tom, um, it's 2019, Mm -hmm. uh, scarily, rapidly drawing towards its close. And next year is an Olympic year for the Summer Olympics. Yep. And it's a nice lead in to what you'd like to talk about because Toyota's a major sponsor. Yes. And they're doing some special stuff around the Olympics. Yeah. So we hear a lot about all these kind of emerging technologies, um, high tech stuff like cars talking to street lights and uh, cars talking to other cars. Just and, in conversation. Yeah. Just in conversation. Hello, Tab, Mike. Yeah. Hey. Having a chat. Yeah. Good to Are see you, you Trevor. You? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make the light go green. I can't do that. Um, no. But so what Toyota have done, that, as you said, they're a major sponsor of the upcoming Tokyo Olympics. And uh, what they plan for it to be is the uh, 90% of their fleet of vehicles that are, have been provided for the event will be uh, n- kind of new energy solutions. Yes. So they're okay. either going to be electric or hybrid. Hydrogen fuel or, cell. Or hydrogen kind of fuel cell. Yeah. yeah, they've got a whole bunch of those Mirais. Yeah, brilliant. Um, which they're providing to the Olympic staff and uh, Toyota support team. Um, but so uh, part of it as well is they've brought a whole bunch of concept vehicles to life. So they've got these weird little mini buses that don't have drivers and they've got uh, mini buses that do have drivers but uh, are meant to, they're all electric Yes. and uh, they have, you know, whatever, whatever is 170 kilometers range, but they're meant for ferrying uh, athletes around for the Paralympics. So people who oh, wow. are less mobile and it, it's all that, all uh, that so kind of stuff. Do you know, Tom, at this point, whether the driverless buses Mm -hmm. are on a dedicated kind of path, I presume, or are they tinkering with full autonomous type? Well, you know, they're artificially intelligent and all that. So that's interesting because um, some of them are and some of them aren't. So they've got this bus that's come out and it's called the Sora. So not Sora, uh, not the V8 coupe. Oh, shame. (laughs) Shame. <laughs> but they've got this bus called the Sora, and it runs. It's a hydrogen fuel cell. Yep. And the idea of uh, the bus is actually quite neat because what they it's got vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure communication built into it. And the idea is that it, if you have a convoy of them, it's got a convoy mode, and somebody drives it. It's not fully autonomous, but what it does is it tells them what speed to go at, and it gives them a countdown to the next time they need to stop. And the idea uh, is you can have a convoy of whatever it is, three to eight buses, yeah. and they will all stay in convoy no matter when the lights change because the lights will tell the bus. So it's just optimizing everything. Fully optimized communication. convoy yes. travel, everything. So it's wow. designed to make the Olympics kind of like this really slick. But is that one still for athletes or it's for everybody? Um, so it says, it says public. So as far cool. as I know... It'll um, be for punters. It'll be come for along punters. To yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, that is very. Cool. Yeah, that technology is becoming more and more. Uh, I guess um, experimented with the car to infrastructure. Uh, Audi's yeah. doing a test yeah. where they're trying to beat red lights essentially, and yep. that's that's. I mean, that's going to be fuel saving. It's going to be time saving, and that's the the vision for smart cities of the future. Yeah. So it's really interesting that they're going to roll this out for a major event where things, you know. Things have to go on time. Because yeah. when you think about Toyota and cities, hmm. you know, the part of the brand and business that we don't see in Australia is where they start to expand out into housing yeah. and hmm. into all of that infrastructure that goes into the way people live. So vehicles are just a, a small part of that. Yeah. Yeah. And they're looking very broadly at mobility 
um, in that sense too. Yeah, they're they're also at this event going to have a, a whole bunch of other weird little Toyota things that they mm. that they do only in Japan. So there's going to be scooters and yeah. mopeds for staff to ride on. What about and, the their version of the Segway? I think it's called a Land Wing or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, they, they're going to. You have, and I have had a get yes, back on it, right? Yes, we've yes. had a go. Yeah, they, they're going to have a thing like that there for staff to ride on. So cool. um, yeah, it should be it should be interesting. It'll it'll, it'll be interesting to see if anything goes wrong because it all it's all this kind of um, technology that's only been tested yes yeah. um, and not tried at a major public well, event that's great for a you know um, a car perf to have something to look at at the Olympic Games yeah. is yeah. good I remember at Lond- in London it was the little minis the, that brought the shot puts and javelins yeah. and discuses yeah. and things back that was pretty, pretty they were fun. amazing um, so people could um, and should keep their eyes peeled this time. Yeah, yeah. And, and you'll even get to drive. Um, they, they, they're they're going to they have this thing called the Concept I, which is a, a semi-autonomous AI. Yep. Kind of. Uh, it, it looks like a Prius. Uh-huh. Um, and up until this point, it's been a concept car, but they're going to have production versions rolling around that they'll Man. give people test rides in. So, I can imagine they will yeah. roll out everything. There'll be the um, I road. There'll be you yeah. name it. Yeah. yeah. And okay. and because it's Toyota. It will go off without a hitch. You know, yeah. th- this is this is the way that they wouldn't do this unless they were one hundred percent sure that they could do it right. Yes. So, I mean, I, I you know I stand to be corrected, obviously, but <laughs> yeah. let's see what happens. They I, probably I'm, did their first full dress rehearsal a year ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's true. Yeah. 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 Okay. Terrific. Now, thank you, Tom. We're going to move on to our garage and what's been in it. And Matt, we're gonna we're gonna expand the notion of what our or, or the boundaries of our garage. Yeah. Because uh, this week it's gonna go to your house. Yeah. So tell us, what have you been driving? In oh, what I've been street parking is, yeah, yeah. is my uh, 2007 Suzuki Jimny, uh, because I've been doing a lot of uh, testing of Utes and other vehicles over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I needed a pallet refresher, and uh, my old Jimny uh, is exactly that. So it, it was a back. Jimny itch that you need to scratch, oh. and you did. So you bought a 2007. 2007, yep. I bought it off an 80-year-old bloke in Bathurst. Um, it had 134 Four thousand kilometres on it when I bought it about five months ago. Um, it had no. It was running out of rego. It had a death wobble at the front uh, axle. <laughs> yes. Um, it, yeah. It was. It ticked all the boxes. It ticked every every yeah. single box that you could <laughs> possibly want it to. Uh, so yeah, it's a all fi- the boxes in the assessment sheet that says needs work. Yeah. 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 So it's a five speed manual. Um, it's a really tight, uh, nice little car. Drives really well. Um, I just uh, had rego check last week and so um, managed to talk myself into an upgrade for my tyres because the guy rang me back. He goes, you know your tyres are rooted. I said, yeah, they're pretty bad. He goes, yeah, they're, they're done. Um, right. So they're just hard. He goes, oh, cracked. I can get you some cheapies for 115 a corner or, you know, some slightly better ones. Uh, they're still highway terrains. I said, what about all terrains? He goes, uh, yeah, we can do that for you. So uh, picked up a set of... Um, all terrains for it, which Falcon all terrains. And it fixed the death wobble. Yeah, fixed the death wobble. Obviously, it was just a wheel balance issue. Yep. Um, I thought it was something more major mm. than that, and I was very happy when he told me that he jacked it up, had a look underneath, pulled everything apart and put it back together and said, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. tight as. So, wow, fantastic. Um, so it's uh, it's a great little car, uh, a lot of fun. Um, I'm still yet to take it off-road, uh, but that might be something that I'm going to remedy soon. Super, fantastic. Yeah. That's good. Well, yeah. we can check in on that vehicle oh, from yeah. time to time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that. that guy would have got his perfect Jimmy buyer too. Yeah, so, you know. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, the day that I picked it up, I'd actually uh, flown from Melbourne to Sydney after catching a ferry from uh, Launceston to Melbourne mm-hmm. because of a failed car buying experience yes. in Tasmania. Yes. So the car I wanted in Tassie wasn't right. So we still got the ferry back and then got a Board plane. A car and yeah, it was a big couple of days. Unreal. Fantastic. <laughs> The lengths you will go to to purchase oh, a new vehicle. Need a deal. Now, Tom, turning to your good self, tell us what has been occupying your driving time. Uh, yeah, so not uh, last week, I think, the week before. Yep. Uh, I got to drive uh, the Volkswagen Touareg, which I've driven before, but I hadn't sort of had for, for a couple of days. And I had, I had it for a couple of days, and it, it was great. I loved it. Yes. I, I, I think just that diesel 
v v6 is just the the best kind of solution and i like the idea of you kind of have this hotel room that you can take anywhere <laughs> um because we had one uh, when i went out and did this uh test of the uh amarok 580 black they also had a twireg out there and uh-huh. it did everything the amarok did yeah, yeah so right. it's just as good off-road yeah. Yeah. the engine's just well slightly less powerful it turns out but not mm. not by much it's, and it's also underpinned by that fantastic platform that the volkswagen group uses so broadly yeah but it imbues that car with such a great um, ride comfort and, and ability, uh, it's something quite special, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, and uh, as I said, like I, I like the idea. It's a hotel room that can go anywhere. Yeah, gotcha. It's tough. It's it's awesome to drive. Yeah. Um, but, all, yeah, like super refined, super comfortable. Yeah. And, and like we found in our um, luxury SUV comparison test, the six-cylinder is one of the most important elements of a luxury large yes. SUV. Yeah. Like we had that GLE that with the four-cylinder engine, and obviously we wanted to get the six-cylinder engine for it, but we couldn't because it wasn't available to us at the time. Mm. And it probably would have been a much tighter test in that regard because against the BMW uh, straight six, it was just, you know, oh, mm. geez, which one do you choose? They're both great. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. and I just love, I just love V6. And if it is a hotel uh, room, Tom, is it one of those ones with the embarrassing glass panel between the living room and the bathroom? <laughs> or is there some way of actually screening that off? Yeah, the bathroom's an interesting one. Can uh, you watch telly from the dummy? <laughs> is what exactly. he's asking. That's what I'm saying. Can people in the room see you when you're in there? Um, no, look, we, we, that that's good. And it, it was the like a lower spec model yes. that we've been seeing lately, yeah? So it turns out they only sell it in one spec. Um, uh-huh. the, yeah. There's a yeah. launch edition, yes. and there's a V8 that they've just launched in Europe that the, may or the, may not may come not here, come here. Yep. Um, but we would love it to. Right, um, it, it's it's like nine hundred newton meters you know, of torque or something. That's a V eight petrol too. Yeah, it yes. is. Oh no, 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 it's a diesel. diesel. It's a diesel. Yeah. Diesel, yeah. Di- right. di- diesel, 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 and and it's wildly. It's like the most powerful V eight diesel I think in a production car at the moment because yeah. it's nine hundred newton meters of torque or something. Anyway, is that um, okay? <laughs> <laughs> is that um, but the one we had. So what was special about it is it didn't have all the option packs fitted. Yeah, I see. Um, so there's so you know had the standard instrument uh, standard display. instrument cluster yep. which. You know, when you hop in it, having been in the one with all the bells and whistles, it kind of seems like, oh, it's meant to have that screen because it's got this big cutout where the yeah. fi- ah. like, huge 15 point whatever and inch screen goes. And a slightly smaller goes. media screen. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And, it's then, and then it's got some like buttons ah. where there weren't buttons before. before. Right. Um, and yeah. it, it, but but you know what? After you've spent more than a day in it, you forget all of that and it, mm. it all just works. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you sort of, it doesn't need it really. Yeah. Um, but you'd only know that like... I guess if you walked into a dealership and you drove one that had the big screen and all that, you'd be like, oh, wow, you have to have that one. Yeah, but it's yeah. an eight grand option, the Sound and Vision package or whatever it's called. The Inner, Inner Vision. Inner Vision, that's yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Inner Vision package. Not Inner Vision. No. Inno. Inno. Inno Vision. Yeah. yeah. So it's an $8,000 option that transforms the dash. Yes. But yeah. if oh, you didn't have they, it, you wouldn't know. Yeah. Are they getting it, trying to get us to think about innovation? Oh. oh. <laughs> How good. Clever, and it also had slightly <laughs> smaller wheels, uh, which I liked as well because it, it improved the ride even further. Yeah, All right. yeah. Well, that's cool, man. We better you know kick on yep. because um, time is ticking, and I will just chip in with uh, the fact that our garage stretched down to Phillip Island um, uh, this week and had the it's opportunity. A big garage. Had, it is a massive garage. Yeah. <laughs> Subterranean. You can fit quite a few vehicles in there, <laughs> and um, I had a chance to drive the new A90 Toyota Supra. So finally, it's landed on our shores. It has polarized opinion in terms of the way it Mm. looks. People are loving it or hating it. There's not much in between Mm -hmm. on this car. Um, So we had a chance to drive it on a loop through South Gippsland in Victoria and on the circuit at Phillip Island, which is such a great, epic kind of track. And uh, you can see my video and the detailed review already up on the site. But to give you the thumbnail, uh, there are two models, GT and GTS. We're talking 84, 900, so 85 grand, and the GTS is 10 grand more. Um, it's essentially a twin under the skin from the BMW Z4. It's a jointly developed model for people that don't know. I had driven that Z4 just a, a little while ago, the 40i, which is the equivalent drivetrain. Not really a fair comparison because here we were fanging around a racetrack and um, doing mm. a, a, a big road loop. Anyway, short, short story is I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was terrific. Um, the engine... Uh, it's 250 kilowatts, 500 newton meters, but the torque's available from way down, I think 1,600 through to about 4,500. If you're at 2,300, you just squeeze your right um, ankle, it goes like a cut cap. Yeah. It's really quick. And on the big uh, sweeping corners on Phillip Island, so stable, really well planted. The brakes are great, 
just really enjoy driving the car. So it is like a bigger, meaner version of the 86, you know, yeah. engine mm. in the nose, rear wheel drive. This eight speed auto, it acts like a dual clutch. It's so quick when you're using it in manual mm. mode. I really enjoyed the experience. Awesome. So for people that are ready to spend that kind of money, you could do a heck of a lot worse. It has got the performance and dynamic credentials to challenge cars that are twice that money. Yeah. Um, without a doubt. Awesome. And I was looking at some of that footage of the video as it was being put together. Uh-huh. And the thing that took me by surprise was how the interior doesn't look too much Well, that's like right. I mean, we had a bit of toing and froing in that um, Matt put me straight on some of the elements that I'd <laughs> yeah. missed because of that. Yeah. You know? And Toyota has been very clever in the way it's tweaked some of that stuff. So you've got a gear shifter, you've got a, a rotary controller for the media system. You've got some of the switch gear and dials and things, but Toyota has managed to arrange them and kind of style them so that it just doesn't it doesn't feel anything like a BMW interior. The only thing that really caught my eye was that shifter because yeah, it is yeah. so characteristic of a BMW. Um, but the rest of it, yeah, not so much. But that's and that's nice too. It's it's nice that you're not just getting a sort of rebadged interior. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. I think that that'll mean a lot to the people who buy yeah. it. Yeah. So anyone that's interested, have a look at that. Have a read of that. Um, I certainly enjoyed it. It was tons of fun <laughs> it would have been now speaking of tons of fun it's time for musk watch great now let's let's get into it first of all sniff petrol um a for legend. those that are familiar, uh, it's produced by a guy called Richard Porter, who used to be a script editor for uh, Top Gear um, on the TV. He is a very talented, quick-witted, funny guy. Extremely. And so if you haven't ever taken in Sniff Petrol, I recommend that you give it a go. Anyhow, Sniff Petrol has identified a condition called teslosis. Mm. <laughs> and the definition is up on their website. It says, the symptoms of teslosis include... Delusion, obsession, and a powerful belief that specific consumer durables have magical powers, even though they have little to no discernible superiority over other similar objects. <laughs> uh, by the same token, Teslosis sufferers will often display signs of ascribing godlike powers to another person and will be angered that non sufferers refuse to see a genius instead of a twitchy eyed bullshitting fraud. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen Teslosis in action Teslosis, on our comments. We have. Oh, oh, yeah. Look, oh yeah. yeah. There is more to that story. If you want the full <laughs> deal, go to uh, Sniff Petrol. It is fantastic. Now, Fox News, I was um, uh, just perusing around. They've called out the fact that Elon Musk had something to say about uh, their Tesla's latest competitor being the electric Porsche Taycan. Mm -hmm. um, and that was unveiled on Wednesday this week. We've covered that pretty comprehensively on carsguide.com.au. So Elon tweeted on Thursday afternoon, quote, um, at Porsche, this word turbo does not mean what you think it does, end quote. Now, that's because Porsche has chosen to put turbo on the top model. It's an electric motor. It's not mm. an internal combustion engine. Okay, there's no turbo. But turbo is something that's become synonymous with Porsche's top models. Yeah. That's the logic they're applying. But Elon Musk felt obliged to have a bit of a dig because I suspect you know he's feeling a bit threatened and, and on it goes. Could, could be because a lot of the reviews have said, oh, buy Tesla. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah. This, this, this is going to kill Look, you it's off. It's a lot dearer than a Model S. A yeah, lot of that going around. In different segments. But um, the first thought that occurred to me, and it's occurred to others, um, is, well, what about autopilot? Mm. That doesn't mean uh, exactly what you think it means either. Yeah. Mm, um, yeah. You know, autopilot to me always says, hands off, kick back, and it's not. Yeah. So yeah. turbo, autopilot, pot, kettle, mm. yes. introduced to yeah. one another. Yes. Um, now, also, according to the dear leader, it is the end times are very close. Mm. We last time around talked about the artificial intelligence conference that was on in Shanghai, mm -hmm. where Elon Musk debated or had a conversation with Jack Ma, who's the person who runs Alibaba, about where AI was heading. And um, Elon thinks it's going to be the end of everything. But he did also say uh, there's a probability that something may happen to Earth, right? Um, despite our best <laughs> that sounds efforts, like a threat. <laughs> despite our best efforts and everything we might try to do, some external force or unforeseen error causes civilization to be destroyed or sufficiently impaired that civil civilization cannot extend to another planet. What we were talking about, you know, with humans being cancer, etc. So yep. that's uh, Elon's big goal is to populate Mars. Um, and actually, SpaceX has identified several landing spots on Mars. 
right. already. So NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter High Rise, uh, that camera database from that uh, vehicle, includes a handful of images labelled Candidate Landing Site for SpaceX Starship. Right. So we're getting closer and closer can to he, that next step. Can he just go? That, look, there was some feedback to that um, <laughs> To that uh, same thought, I must say, Matt. But uh, anyway, look, and the share price, we're talking uh, $229, $229, which is up a little from $215 last week. Yeah. That's cool. But one of the things that is worth thinking about, Bloomberg's reporting that global electric car sales fell for the first time ever in July by about 14%. Now, wow. part of that is China. Yep. Chinese electric car sales dropped because the subsidies have been mm, dropped. The yeah. Chinese government is no longer subsidising electric cars. China is the biggest producer and market, a uh, producer of and market mm. for electric cars. Yep. But Tesla still led sales there, which is interesting. Mm. However, that's constricting. It's the first time ever that electric car sales have gone backwards. Wow. Yeah. So it just goes to show how artificial a market it is. is absolutely. Yeah. Based on incentive. Money drives things, yep. you know, um, in a Western society particularly, and China is this kind of strange amalgam between a Western kind of thinking um, economy yep. and a communist kind of political philosophy, yeah. um, it talks. If there's money in it, people will do it. Either yep. they're going to save money or make money, that's what drives they call it. They call it uh, open market capitalism with Chinese yes. characteristics. Yeah, exactly. That's the official exactly. line. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, once subsidies go... People, mm, I'll look elsewhere. Yeah. I don't really care about the planet so much anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's right. Yeah. So anyway, we'll watch that share price as usual next week. Okay, with that, we have reached the finish line. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. And thank you, Tom. Thank you. And many thanks to Mr. Pritchard for his production excellence as usual. He's rocking the pinstripe uh, crop top today <laughs> with mm. the riding pants and pith helmet. It's... um. It's an arresting look, I've got to say. But it's quite the impression. Quite the impression. It's, it stands yeah, out in the crowd. ensemble. <laughs> Please pass on the word about the podcast and let us know your thoughts by searching for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. And remember, you can watch us on YouTube if you've been listening on iTunes or elsewhere. We're on YouTube as well. Yep. Until next week, our eldest rang me today and said, I think the brakes on my car are faulty. So I said, where's the car now? She said, in the living room. Mm. <laughs> not bad. Not a good day. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't actually happen, did it? <laughs> I hope not. Hope not.